Hello everyone, this is Lata Akula. In this video, we are going to study about amino acids. So, amino acids are all, also the biomicromolecules. These are also biomicromolecules. Another name for the amino acids were they were called as methane derivatives or substituted methane. What is the formula of methane? CH4. The carbon is present and the four hydrogen molecules are present. Here, why the amino acids were called as substituted methanes? Because the four valency positions were replaced by four compounds. Here, the first hydrogen group was replaced by amino group. Second hydrogen group was replaced by carboxyl group. Third hydrogen group was same, hydrogen only. And fourth hydrogen group was replaced by the R group. Here, they were similar to the um, similar to the methane. So, but the four valency positions of hydrogen positions were replaced by the four compounds. That is why we are calling them as substituted methanes. And here, depending upon the nature of R group, depending upon the nature of R group, different amino acid varies. The chemical composition of the amino acid varies. There were nearly 20 types of amino acids occur in proteins. We know that amino acids, they form the proteins. Proteins for the biomacromolecules. What are the subunits of the proteins? These amino acids are the substitute. Uh, subunits of the proteins. Hence, these are called as biomicromolecules and proteins were called as biomacromolecules. And here, depending upon the R group, amino acid varies. In the R group, different chemical um, compounds will replace. For example, in the R group, there is hydrogen is present. That amino acid is called as glycine. This glycine is called as simple amino acid. And if the R group is replaced by methyl group, that amino acid is called as alanine. And if it is replaced by hydroxymethyl group, that is called as serine. Here, depending upon the type of R group, amino acid varies. And the basis of ability to synthesize amino acids by our body, amino acids are classified into three types. They were essential amino acid, semi-essential amino acid and non-essential amino acids. The first one is essential amino acid. Here, the essential amino acids, they were not synthesized by our body. That means they are necessary for our body, but our body was not supplying it. Then, then where we get it? We need to take the amino acid through our diet. That means this amino acid must be supplied through the diet. Examples for this Essential amino acids are phenylalanine, valine, tryptophan, threonine, isoleucine, methionine, lysine and leucine. These, were, these eight were called as essential amino acids. And uh, there are two amino acids are present which are synthesized very slowly by, the, uh, by our body during certain stages of the life. They were called as semi-essential amino acids. The semi-essential amino acids synthesized very slowly by our body only and during certain periods, certain stages of, a, of the life cycle like uh, during the growth period and during the lactation time, these amino acids were synthesized by our body. They were called as histidine. Examples for them are histidine and arginine. Histidine and arginine. And next one is non-essential amino acid. These amino acids, they need not to be supplied through the diet. That means what? They were synthesized by our body itself. Example, here are the remaining 10 amino acids are the here 8 plus 2, 10 over. So essential and semi-essential uh, amino acids, they occupy the half of the amino acids. The remaining 10 are the non-essential amino acids. They were not needed through the diet. They were synthesized by our body itself. Example are alanine, as arginine, aspartic acid or aspartate, glutamine, glutamate or glutamic acid, glycine, cysteine, tyrosine, proline and serine. These are called as non-essential amino acids. And based on 
amino group and carboxylic group. Um, here, the physical and the chemical property of amino acid the changes according to the amino group, carboxyl group, and R group present. Here, based on the amino group, number of amino groups and number of carboxylic groups, we have three different types of amino acids. They were acidic amino acids, basic amino acids, and neutral amino acids. The first one is acidic amino acids. Here, Acidic amino acids means normally we have one carboxylic group is present in amino acid. One carboxylic group is present. But in addition to that carboxylic group, there is an additional carboxylic group is present. What is the function of the carboxylic group? It provides acidic nature to the amino acid. Here already one carboxylic group is present. Additionally, the carboxylic group is present. That means the amino acid will become more acidic. That amino acid were called as acidic amino acid. Examples for those acidic amino acids were glutamic acid or glutamate, aspartic acid or aspartate. And the second one is basic amino acid. So which group providing basic nature for the amino acid? Amino group, amine group present in the amino acid that provide the basic property. But in addition to that amino group, there is additional extra amino group is present. That amino acid will become more basic. Here, extra amino group present that is called as basic amino acid. Examples for those basic amino acids are lysine and arginine. Lysine and arginine were called as basic amino acids. And the last one is the neutral amino acid. If the amino acid has one amino group and one carboxylic group, those amino acids, they have acidic group and basic group, they together form the neutral position. They will neutralize this amino acid. There is no extra acidic group. There is no extra basic group. So that amino acids are called as neutral amino acid. Example, we need to um, we need to remember this shortcut that is G A V L Galvin. G for glycine, A for alanine, V for valine, I for isoleucine, and L for leucine. So we have completed uh, acidic, basic, and neutral amino acids. Next is sulfur containing amino acids. Sulfur containing amino acids means they contain sulfur. Example, cysteine, cysteine and methionine are the sulfur containing amino acids. These examples were very important. Alcoholic amino acids, they consist of hydroxyl group. Example for those alcoholic containing amino acids are serine and treonine. And some amino acids, they have N. They are called as heterocyclic amino acids, which consists of N in the, uh, present in the ring. Example, proline, histidine and hydroxyproline. And next one is aromatic amino acids. These aromatic amino acids, they consist of benzene ring. They, they consist of cyclic structure, which is in the form of benzene ring. To that benzene ring, they, they have a straight side chain. That straight side chain consists of carboxyl group, amine group, hydrogen and all. Next example, here tyrosine, tryptophan and phenylalanine are examples for these aromatic amino acids. The aromatic amino acids, they consist of benzene ring. And in these amino acids only, there is one important accept, um, concept is present, that is the Zwitterion concept. So, Zwitterion means... And the amino acids, there are um, amine group and carboxyl groups are present. They are, I, they have ionizable nature. That means they can dissociate into the protons, right? So this amine and carboxylic groups, they have the highly dissociating nature. These fully ionized species are called as zwitterions. What are zwitterions? The fully ionized species are known as zwitterions. So these zwitterions, they consist of positive charge and negative charge. What is uh, the zwitterion consists of both the positive charge is present and negative charge is present. And these amino acids, they have a carboxyl group and amine group. That is one is acidic group and one, another one is the basic group. Both are present. Hence, they can exist in the form of uh, acidic form and basic form. Depending upon the pH of the solution where that amino, has been, amino acid has been dissolved. For example, if you see at isoelectric point, that is at a neutral pH, amino acid exists in the form of zwitter ion or dipolar ion. Dipolar ion means it has both positive charge and a negative charge. And here, 
for example this is amino acid structure as we know already that is carbon is present at four valences they have a carboxyl group amine group hydroxyl and r functional groups are present when that amino acid has been dissolved in aqueous solution or in dissolved in water the proton present in the hydro uh, carboxyl group will dissociate and add it to the amine group when it loses the proton what is the charge here negative charge when it accepts the proton when it accepts the proton the amine group will get the positive charge that means nh2 will become nh3 and covh by losing one proton it will become the covo minus so here positive charge is present in one compound and negative charges are present in another compound that is positive charge and negative charge were present in the same that is called as zwitter ion or dipolar ion understood so here in the zwitter ion both positive charge is present in one compound and negative charge is present in the another compound that is called as zwitter ion or dipolar ion here the net charge is zero at the neutral ph this is zwitter ion occurs in amino acids when this amino acids the structure uh, of this amino acid changes according to the solution at the different phs where they have dissolved depending upon the type of the solution whether it is a basic or acidic depending on the type of the solution the structure of the amino acids also changes for example Uh, if this is a zwitter ion, right? When it is uh, when it is a uh, kept in acidic medium, which has the uh, protons. Acidic medium means they have H plus ions. When it is full of when it is kept in the acidic medium, what will happen here? Uh, it is in it is in the form of CO O minus, right? And when it is kept in H, uh, acidic medium, which consists of H plus ions, it will accept one H plus and become into the CO O H plus. And already here there is an H three plus. and the car the carboxyl group which have been which lost its proton again accepts and here the positive charge will be gained that will become the cation and this is zwitter ion when it is kept in the basic media so when it is kept in the acidic media it will become it has the acidic it will become acidic and it ha, it, it it was in the form of it has cations and when this is zwitter ion when it is kept in the basic media which is having hydroxyl groups and here in the nh3 there is a nh3 there are three protons are present here there is a hydroxyl group this hydroxyl group and one proton from the nh3 will be this uh, will be re uh, removed in the form of water molecule and finally this nh3 will becomes nh2 uh, and uh, the charge is the minus because by losing one proton this nh3 plus will becomes into nh2 minus already in the carboxyl group by losing one proton it is having neg negative charge that means it is uh, in the form of anion and it has basic nature so depending upon the type of the solution they have uh, they are dissolved the structure of these amino acids also changes and this is about zwitter ion concept where both positive charges and negative charges exist in the amino acids uh, depend uh, in the neutral ph that is called as zwitter ion or dipolar ion and here this amino acids they have been joined with one another by means of a bond called as peptide bond in carbo uh, in carbohydrates also we have uh, studied that carbohydrates monosaccharides or monomers have been joined with one another by means of glycosidic bond whereas here uh, these amino acids will join together and form the protein right how they join by means of peptide bond how this peptide bond is formed two amino acids join through amino group of one amino acid and carboxyl group of another amino acid and form the peptide bond by losing one water molecule see here this is one amino acid this is another amino acid here this amino acid it has a carboxyl group here this amino acid it has the amine group here in amine group nh2 uh, will dissociate in the form of h and h and h and here hydrogen from one uh, hydrogen from the um, amine and hydroxyl from the oh 
will be removed will be lo lo uh, uh, eliminated in the form of water molecule and between these two CO and H bond is created that CO and H bond is nothing but the peptide bond like this the peptide bond is formed between the carboxyl group and amine group by removing one water molecule CO and H is the peptide bond and here few amino acids join with one another and form a oligopeptide and many amino acids join with one another and form the polypeptide here this polypeptide is nothing but protein this polypeptide is nothing but protein and this is about the amino acids with, with this we have completed amino acids in the next video we are going to start with the proteins